You know what I want for Christmas this year? A big fat sack of Haley Steinfeld. And maybe, just maybe some Hawkeye. Ah, yes, friends. It's your man Z here from Our Reviews Will Kill You. And I am here. Looks like some of the critics got their hands on Hawkeye ahead of time. And uh, they're not liking it. They're not liking it. It's, it's, it's a little thrown up there because I didn't bring up the Rotten Tomatoes because I think the critics have it at like 80% or something like that. But I saw these these show media rags saying things like uh i mean this is pretty <laughs> pretty damning hawkeye review the mcu slapdash holiday series is a disney branded lump of coal that's pretty that's pretty harsh and there's a couple other harsh ones out there so i was curious as to what was going on i'm going to attempt to not spoil anything because i did read through some of these articles and of course they're telling you the whole plot of what they've seen so far and you know there's mcguffin this and mcguffin that and things here so i'm gonna try not to ruin any of that because they basically give away the the plot of at least the first couple episodes and it's always tough to to criticize these things because you, you know the critics are only getting a couple episodes it's just like um same thing i was complaining about with the cowboy bebop you know it's 10 hours to get through i've gotten through about half of it same thing with amazon's wheel of time that i'm trying to get three through three hours of that and it's just difficult to do so if for them they always give these half-ass reviews where they don't ever really finish it they just give you the first initial thing so what we try to do here is we give you what's coming up what to expect our first takes on it we try to avoid spoilers and then we'll probably do an in-depth breakdown for you at some point which you can catch in our full-length audio podcast or in some of the videos here in in um youtube so Let's take a look and see, but I think it's it's interesting. People have this love-hate relationship with Jeremy Renner and the Hawkeye character. He's one of the original Avengers, but he's also not powered, and he doesn't have the same appeal, I guess, as Black Widow, who could get her own film. Hawkeye's always been the forgotten Avenger. I do really enjoy He's had some good moments. One of my favorite moments of Hawkeye's is from... Age of Ultron, where he's talking to the Scarlet Witch, and they're on top of Sokovia as it's flying, and he goes, "Lady, I'm on a flying, I'm in a flying city, shooting robots with a bow and arrow. <laughs> this is my life." Like he has a great line there, and I do like the stuff with his family, and I really thought that he brought home the human and personal touch when it came to Endgame. You know, with him and the family and the snap and all that stuff. So. I, I I like I like Jeremy Renner. I've always, I've even liked him since he did that movie. Um, oh my gosh, the one with the bombs. If you remember what it is, tell me in the comments because I can't remember it right now. Something about he's a he's a bomb diffuser over in Iraq, and uh, he keeps going back, and it's a really good movie. The Hurt Locker. Ha ha! I got it. You can still tell me in the comments if you liked it or not. But that's where about one of my first uh, remembering Jeremy Renner. Really liking that movie. So. Let's talk a little bit about this, where it seems like they're already saying that we're not going to like this. And the big problem is, and I did like this re this review in particular, and I'm going to read parts of it, because they tend to agree with me. And if you want to check it out, I have a whole horde of MCU rants. And they're mostly, like, I'm a huge fan of the MCU. I love the first 20 movies, and then things have started to get a little bit weird. And then the series got a little bit weird, and I've been trashing them pretty heartily. So, the this this writer here, uh, let's see, Ben Travers. Good job, Ben. Tweet him if you want, I guess. He's Bent Travers on Twitter. Good for you, dude. Anyway, he says, you know, WandaVision had an intriguing start. Which I, yeah, I kind of liked it. Obviously, I think the morality of that show was a little wacky. It didn't make a lot of sense that uh, Wanda was allowed to torture people f because she was sad. That seems to be um, not good, right? And then you have the Falcon and Winter Soldier, which was just garbaggio, kind of like, bleh. you know, I, I really killed that one. And then Loki, which I was mad about because and they're saying it's overstretched and people like certain moments of it but if you rewatch those scenes with with Kang and tell me that that's a good performance or even interesting 
after you've watched it and then rewatch it and go, what am I, what am I watching here? This is insanity. So anyway, uh, yeah, they're saying that, that these, none of these episodes really connect to anything. Now this could be wrong because when into the spider verse thing comes out or, you know, what is it? Spider-Man no way home and Dr. Strange and the infinite sadness of infinite multiverses which is being reshot like who who knows it just it seems like the wheels are kind of falling off the bus why are they reshooting that whole thing so anyway the big complaint is that this does not it's just filler there's nothing there's no real stakes nothing really interesting i guess it's a neat way to introduce um annoying Hall no i can't i can't keep ripping Haley steinfeld because i really do like her in arcane so i'll just leave it at neutral Haley Steinfeld playing Kate Bishop. I just I don't know where this is where this is headed or, or what we're gonna see. I, I like I said, I don't want to go down too far because they might be going in and they're just saying they're not given enough to do, you know, and the plot is a little kerfuffled and a little bit messed up. But let's take a look at this other one too. So still avoiding spoilers. Again, and who is this is RogerEber.com, part of the like legitimate reviewers, Brian Telerico here. And this is, you know, a legitimate venue. Are they turning on Marvel? They turned on them in, in Eternals. So what are the critics doing now? Hawkeye is a forgettable vision of a secondary hero. I mean, that's pretty damning. You know, it's pretty weird that they're really going going um, hard on this. There is a two episode launch of six episodes that you'll see on Disney Plus. And I don't understand, like they're saying it's difficult to sell the Hawkeye brand, which is low key with one of the most charismatic young actresses. Enough of that noise. That is nonsense. She is not one of the most charismatic characters. I, you go too far. You watch Bumblebee and tell me how charismatic she is. It's just okay. And they're just like, um, these guys, it's, it's, it's incredible. Like they felt that WandaVision was trying to do something new. Yeah. For the first four episodes. And then it became superhero schlocky. Right. And then the Falcons and the winter soldier landed with more of a predictable thud when it came into politics with, with its questionable politics, all of the show media was saying how great these things were. So what, what how come you're looking back agreeing with me? You know, when I was saying it, I'd get ripped and people would be calling me names and being mean to me <laughs> in here to like, oh, yeah, Loki fared a little bit better in the creativity department. That's what I want to see. One of the most interesting characters or villains in the MCU in an office for most of the time. Yes, I want to see an office drama with Loki. Thank you. So they're just saying it's forgettable and it tends to be thin. I don't know how it is the best source material. I do not want it. Yeah, I don't want to hear about all the other nonsense, but I don't know. The one thing I think it has going for it is it could be a cool Christmas show. Maybe that's cool. I would kind of be into that if it's like a cool Christmas theme thing. And I know it takes place during Christmas, so maybe that's good. Maybe it's a Christmas classic and we just don't know it yet. And I will reserve judgment. I'm not going to be like these critics and be like, oh, after the first two episodes, it sucks. No, I'm going to give it an honest to goodness chance and I'll give you my legitimate opinion when I get all the way through it. I will not just rip it for no reason. I mean, unless it's got something completely out of control there. But again, let's be fair, right? Let's be a little bit fair. So uh, what say you, friends? Are you feeling this? Are you, are you a little nervous now? I know some people were kind of into it and kind of excited, but now I'm starting to think if the critics are already bashing it, and, and not all critics. These are just some legitimate sources that I pulled. But when I saw them, I was a little stunned. Lump of coal is pretty damning, a forgettable vision of a secondary. Like, these are not good not good things to say about Disney Plus's hot new series when they have literally what's the next announcement like there's not much else coming I mean yeah I know they announced She-Hulk and that stuff but as we get less and less excited for these Disney Plus like we did a recap of Disney Plus Day and you guys didn't watch it because nobody cared because it was just a bunch of title cards that nobody cares to like it doesn't get anybody excited so anyway um, let me know what you think of the comments because I'm curious about this one. Where, where, where do you guys stand? Let me know and uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about it on the next one. Be sure to catch our full-length audio podcast. 
like subscribe really helps us here really really appreciate you listening and catching me all the way to the end but for myself and our reviews will kill you i'm on to the next one <laughs>